my name is welcome everybody my name is greg ackerman i'm with the sf camps i am so thrilled uh, to be here with you today thank you dr young for including me in this uh, presentation what i'm going to do first i just wanted to um uh share with you uh, just my contact info. Uh, I'll just put that in the chat. Um, you know, so if you do want to reach out afterwards, uh, that way you have that. Um, but for today, uh, what I was going to do is walk you through um, a, a presentation, uh, background information on our organization, uh, what we do, and the types of uh, job opportunities that exist. And then if time allows, one of the things I was hoping to do too is just to share a few tips from a recruiter perspective about job search. Um, and I'll really just say a couple things about resumes. I'll say a couple things about interviewing that it, it may be things you've heard before, uh, but you can hear it from the point of view of a recruiter and, and, and kind of how we see some of these things. And then I definitely wanna make sure uh, there's time for question and answer. Um, you know, I'll do my best to address questions along the way with things that you put in the chat and we'll definitely allow time at the end um, so that there's question and answer. We just want this to be informative for you and, um, and, and hopefully you find it helpful. Uh, the, the, timing of, the time of year is good in terms of our hiring season because we are somewhat early in the hiring season. So you're, you're looking at this at a good time. Um, so I'll go ahead and start, um, you, you know, just in terms of sharing a, a little bit of background, our organization is called ESF Camps. Uh, ESF stands for Education, Sports, and Fun. Um, we operate summer day camps, and mainly we run camps at schools, and I'll go through our locations and where we operate, uh, but the idea is that we will partner with uh, either an independent school or in some cases a public school, in some cases a, a college, a university to use their campus to operate our programs. But then we do everything else, um, all of the programming, materials, staffing, supplies, all of the logistics um, to run these camps. And we have a year round staff that prepares and plans the programs. But what's most important in our eyes is the summer team that delivers the programs uh, for our campers and our families. Uh, so we really look to achieve you know, a variety of things, safety, quality, um, variety of programs, uh, along with great locations. Um, and I know, uh, although we're at University of Maryland and I know we, we draw students from Maryland, I know you draw students from a variety of states. Um, so in Maryland, we do operate at the Academy of the Holy Cross. This is in Kensington. This would be the, the nearest location to your campus, uh, to the main campus uh, of College Park. We do also operate at Gilman School in Baltimore, um, but we also operate in other areas. If you are coming from the, the Pennsylvania area, um, each of the locations you see there are in the Philadelphia area, um, either in the city of Philadelphia or in a surrounding suburb. So anything you see listed in Pennsylvania is pretty much in and around Philadelphia. Um, our locations in New Jersey, William Allen Middle School is in Moorestown, uh, not to be confused with Morristown. Uh, this is Moorestown, which is near Cherry Hill. And then uh, the Chapin School is in Princeton. Uh, so South Jersey and Central Jersey. Um, in Connecticut, uh, Greenwich Catholic School is located right in the town of Greenwich and Trinity College is in Hartford. And then in New York, Riverdale Country School is located in the Bronx. Um, what's not showing here is that we do also operate camps for professional sports teams. Um, and those are a series of one week camps that operate around these areas and some that aren't shown, but we run camps for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, and I'll mention this as we go for the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets. Um, so those camps serve those areas where those teams are. Um, so I definitely want to mention them, even though there's nothing in Maryland for those particular programs, for those of you that may be from around the Philadelphia, New Jersey area or Delaware, uh, as well as Connecticut and New York. Um, those are additional programs to look at, and I'll, I'll go into that next. 
Um, this is a lot to look at, and I'm sorry the font's a little tough to read. I'm going to verbally talk you through it, and then I can definitely share follow-up information. If you go to the website that I left in the chat, you can see about these. But I'm not going to go through box by box, but I'm going to talk about them by group um, or category, I guess, for lack of a better word. So our mini camp and day camp, uh, these are multi-activity camps. Uh, so ESF runs camps that have a variety of activities, um, camps that have a variety of sports, and then specialty camps. So our multi-activity camps would start with day camp and mini camp. They're kind of like two camps in one. They're ages three to seven. They include arts and crafts, uh, daily instructional swim, sports, science, uh, weekly activities in parkour, and archery and different weekly theme days and special events. The purpose of these camps is to give campers a variety of activities each day. Uh, and the campers really in this camp and all of our camps are separated by age and grade level into groups. Um, and I'll talk about how that works with staffing in a moment. Um, the senior camp where you see it says senior camp is a similar idea as mini and day camp, except it's just to older campers, uh, ages eight to 14, uh, this is also a variety of activities. They do arts, sports, swimming. Uh, they also have archery, parkour. Uh, they also do leadership development and some service projects. And then there's weekly choices that they'll have that are designated choices that are you know, broken out on our website, whether it's art-related activities, sports-related, or some actually science-related activities as well. Uh, but the purpose is to give some choice each week. So in terms of multi-activity camps, variety of activities, the mini and day camp would be for the younger campers, senior camp for the older campers. Now for campers that love sports, um, we have a multi-sports camp <clears throat> and we've been running, we've been doing this for a long time as well. And the purpose of this is just to provide instruction and gameplay in a variety of sports <clears throat> as opposed to focusing on any one sport. And this is for ages six to 14. Um, you know, we focus mainly on team sports, basketball, soccer, <clears throat> baseball, flag football, European team handball, some lacrosse skills. Um, th this camp is, you know, of course, like all of our camps divided by age and grade level. Skill level does not matter, <clears throat> but we do separate by age and grade level. And the most important thing about this camp for campers or staff is that they're happy playing sports through a whole day. Because uh, that's the main focus. You probably see a, a reference to Under Armour. Uh, three years ago, we partnered, began partnering with Under Armour because Under Armour has sports related curriculum uh, that involves fitness, movement, agility, <clears throat> which is something we hadn't really incorporated a lot into our camp, uh, but they, they have curriculum in those areas that we now incorporate and then something we have incorporated that Under Armour emphasizes too is character building. Um, you know, in sports, competition is very important, but also other qualities are important too: sportsmanship, teamwork, effort. Um, we try to build on a variety of virtues to really make a complete athlete. So we have our mini and day camp and senior camp that give a variety of activities. We have sports lab that gives a variety of sports. And then there's a variety of specialty camps. So anywhere you see where it says specialty major camps or tech camps, and then there are some location specific names. Um, these are camps where a camper can focus on one activity within a given week. Um, and examples of those activities would be um, science related activities. We partner with the Franklin Institute to run a variety of science camps. We also partner with some aquariums, such as the National Aquarium. Uh, we do um, cooking camps at some of our locations. Uh, we do art camps, dance camps, um, some of the, and then technology camps uh, in robotics, game design, coding. Um, so there's a variety of camps that are offered in one week sessions throughout most of our summer. <clears throat> and um, this is if the camper really wants to focus on one particular activity within a given week. Um, in addition to these specialty camps in you know, arts, technology, science, cooking, 
we have at some of our locations a tennis camp. And then um, we also do some leadership programs for older campers. Um, these are kind of mixed in with our specialty camps. So we see apprentice program, young leaders program. These are meant to be leadership programs for campers that are close to aging out of our camp. Um, and those are incorporated at multiple locations. So they'll still do a variety of activities, but the focus here is, is leadership. And in some cases they're learning bits and pieces about being a counselor. Um, and then the, the last camps you see are our pro sports camps. We've done camps with Phillies Baseball Academy, uh, the, the Phillies camps, uh, Junior 76ers camps. Um, and I'll, uh, they are, sorry, I mean to jump ahead. And then we run camps also with Brooklyn Nets. Um, so these are specialty sports camps that take place in one week segments um, with one week sessions throughout the summer. Now, the reason why I wanted to explain the camp programs, we're not gonna quiz you or test you on these things, but it just helps put the job opportunities in perspective, which is what I wanted to cover with you next, is um, the, the types of positions that we have available um, you know, are broken down by camp type. Um, so, you know, we, we talked about the mini day and senior camps. These are our multi-activity camps, our sports lab camps, and also our pro sports programs. One thing I, I didn't talk a lot about yet, but I will is, um, you know, we don't, we include aquatics and swimming in the majority of our camps. And, and it is a significant, a significant program offering. So I'll mention that. I'll talk about that shortly. And then the major, the specialty camps, the tech camps um, show those position offerings. And then Club OT are, is our before and after care. Um, so for that, a staff can either, staff members can choose to either work additional hours or they can just be hired to work those extended day hours only. So let's go through the positions and kind of break them down in terms of collegiate year. Um, so the majority of positions that we are hiring for are open to freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, on up. Um, so regardless of what year you are <clears throat> at University of Maryland, there's, there's positions you can apply for and it really encompasses the majority of positions we're hiring for. So anywhere you see where it says counselor, coach, lifeguard, swim instructor, regardless of which camp program, if you are an undergrad college student, you can apply for those. And of those, with those positions, counselor, coach, lifeguard, swim instructor, those make up the majority of positions we're hiring for, just, just those. Um, but there are other positions that undergraduate students can also apply for. Um, and this is where it will break down by year. Um, it, it used to be, for most of our existence, that our teaching positions, we really only started hiring for them once a person was a college graduate. Uh, but a few years ago, we changed that because we did find that if a person has experience working with children and they have experience in a particular activity, they may not yet be a college graduate, but perfectly capable of leading that activity. So our teaching positions so anywhere where you see activity specialist, lead teacher, um, those are just two different terms we have for people that are teaching and leading activities. Juniors and seniors on up can apply for those. Uh, so if you're an undergraduate junior, undergraduate senior on up, um, not only can you apply for counselor, coach, lifeguard, swim instructor, you can also apply for lead teacher and activity specialist for the majority of our activities. Um, the other position that you can also look at um, is administrative specialist. Um, everything I've talked about so far involves working directly with children, you know, the counselors. And I'll talk about the, I'll give you a general summary of the positions. Uh, let me do that now, actually. So counselor, what that means as I had mentioned earlier, our campers are divided by age and grade level. Um, so once we do those groupings and we have campers organized by group within each of these programs, then there's counselors that are 
assigned to those particular groups. So in a typical mini camp, day camp, senior camp group, you know, there could be anywhere from with mini and day camp, 15 to 18 campers in one group or less uh, with at least two to three counselors plus whatever activity specialist they're working with for that activity. In senior camp, the groups can get a little bigger. They can get up to 18 to 20. That's an older camper, uh, but still at least two to three counselors. In the sports lab and also the pro sports camps, their structure is very similar. The campers are organized onto teams of 10 to 12 campers. And then those teams are separated by age level. So there could be multiple teams within a particular age level. And then there's one coach per team, plus a instructional specialist per age level, plus we have floater coaches that help and support. Um, so when you count for the instructional specialist and floater coaches, even if some teams are up to 12, which is not always the case, um, we're able to keep the ratio closer to one to eight, one to 10 in those camps. Um, in the mini day and senior, it's one to five to one to eight, depending on the age level. <laughs> major camp similar structures is broken down by the major camp. So let's say it's an art major camp. The capacity for those camps is typically 20. And between the instructor and the counselors, we do whatever we have to do to keep a, you know, one to eight ratio for those. Um, so every po the position I've talked about so far, the counselor, the coach, and then swim instructors, what's happening there is the majority of our campers include, the majority of our camps include swimming, mini, day, senior camp, sports lab, uh, all include swimming. Um, and in general, if I were just generally speaking, any camper that's preschool through age eight or nine is getting instruction when they swim. And then age nine and above is getting a free swim, like a recreational swim. So we need people who are able to lifeguard and also teach swimming. Um, we train, you know, we do provide training to teach our swim program. And then we also reimburse for lifeguard training. Um, so if a person has swimming background and they have some experience working with children, but they just haven't had their lifeguard certification, we feel pretty comfortable that if somebody has a good swimming foundation and they just need lifeguard training, we would reimburse that. There's some conditions around it. Um, you know, the reimbursements at the end of the summer, you have to finish your summer in good standing. Um, but the swim instructors interface with the majority of our camps. Um, and they're mainly in the water teaching, but also at times on the deck lifeguarding too. Um, the other position I wanted to mention is there's a position called administrative specialist. Um, this is still some interaction with children, but these are our main points of contact with camp parents. If a camp parent calls the camp or stops into the camp office, the first person they're seeing are the administrative specialists. So this is more of a, a customer service role with administrative responsibilities, a lot of it related to registration, answering questions for parents or organizing camp documents, camp rosters, but I'd say the other half is customer service. It's being comfortable dealing with adults, dealing with parents and answering the variety of questions that they answer. Um, so those are the positions that um, as an undergraduate student, you can apply for. Just the important thing to remember is, you know, counselor, coach, lifeguard, some instructor, that's any undergraduate year. Um, any of the lead teacher or activity specialists, that's juniors and seniors on up. And the administrative specialist would also be juniors and seniors on up. Uh, the other positions are going to require either a specific degree or work experience. If it's a nurse or, a, or athletic trainer, it has to be a registered nurse or certified athletic trainer. Uh, if it's a director, these are people that have been out working, teaching, or working professionally in a related area. Um, and you would grow into that role. Uh, but it's, it, it's something that's open. That is something that has to be a college grad. So if, if there's any graduate students on this call that have work experience, then yes, you, you definitely could look at a leadership role. Uh, but it has to be 
a college grad with with the, with specific work experience. Um, and then in terms of, okay, all these positions sound great, how do I apply? Um, the way this works, well, well I, I'll come back to that in a moment. I wanted to just mention uh, a couple things before that. Some people may ask, okay, what are you looking for? Like what, what type of staff or what kind of background do our staff need to have? Um, you know, the, the first and foremost is it's a desire to work with children. Um, another important area is having background in an activity that we offer. Um, the desire and experience working with children is a must have. We, we need to see some type of background working with children. It doesn't necessarily have to be previous camps. It can be other types of situations. If you've done other types of childcare or volunteering, or coaching or, or, or helping in a classroom or, or, or working in a camp. Um, you know, we, we do need to see some type of background working with children, or if you've had a chance to have past field experiences in your major. Um, you know, we will ask the question and want to know any type of it, or if you've done babysitting or childcare. Um, you know, we would do want to see some type of experience working with youth. And then other good things to have are experiences in an activity. If it's, you know, if you have art background and can potentially teach art or sports background or science background or aquatics background, you know, that's another important thing we're, that would, we would look for. Um, now, lots of camps want their campers to have fun and so do we. Uh, we want our campers to have a great time. But what's very important for us is that our staff have a great experience. And that breaks down into two areas. One, we want them to have fun. We want them to enjoy their experience. And two, we want our staff to be proud to put ESF on their resume. Um, what I'm talking to you about today are summer positions. You know, there's, I'm sure you've spoken with many employers or talked to many employers who are offering year round full-time positions. But what ESF can do is to help you build your resume as you're pursuing that year round position. Um, all of our positions are paid positions. Our scheduling is flexible in some ways. Um, it is mainly a summer position. The camps run eight or nine weeks, mid June through mid August. Um, you know, our, our camps in Maryland go June 20th through August 12th. Um, most of our camps have a similar schedule. Some may go a week or two later, um, but you're really looking at mid-June through mid to late August. Um, and then if you work in the specialty camps, there is a, a little more scheduling flexibility with the weeks that you work. Um, we want the environment to be fun-filled and we, and we do that by bringing on board like-minded people. Um, we also want it to be organized. If, if things are planned and prepared, it takes away a lot of the stress of working in the summer and a lot of the challenges. So we do develop the curriculum in advance. We do provide the supplies. Um, and then training is very important. We want there to be good training in safety, um, child management, behavior management, uh, training in the activities that we do, uh, training on the facilities that we operate in. Um, so it, it is a, there is training that our staff must go through before they start. Uh, at the bottom where it says internship, independent study, field experiences. What we mean here is that we have found, depending on the major, um, that without us changing anything about the summer job, our jobs have enabled students to use it as an internship uh, because we offer training. Um, because we have what's, um, you know, a structured program and curriculum. The other thing that we have, a lot of internships use the term, well, there needs to be some kind of mentoring. What does ESF do for mentoring? Our leadership team is very present and out amongst the staff. They brief the staff every morning. Uh, they're frequently in activities working with the staff. So that mentoring is there every day, multiple times a day. The other thing we have is an evaluation system. Um, 
our staff do goal setting, and then we do evaluations. And many internships require that. And we already do it for professional development. So it's completely the candidate's choice whether they want this to be a summer job or if they think they could use it as an internship or field experience. You know, we'll provide whatever information is needed. And then ultimately it's the professor or the advisor that would say, yes, this is an internship or, 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 or no, it's not. Um, you know, really would depend on the major. Um, but usually the best way to do this is, you know, go through our interview process. And if we extend an offer and if you accept the offer and you think it could be used as an internship or field experience, you know, talk to the professor advisor and we're happy to speak with them as well. And if, if we can do it, you know, we won't promise anything we can't do. Uh, but if it's something that we can do within the, the, the bounds of, of our program, yeah, we, we would love to. We, 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 we definitely had students in psychology, um, education, and a variety of fields, other types of fields, even like um, kinesiology, sports management, or family studies, or majors like that, um, use ESF as an internship. Sometimes it meets the requirements, sometimes it doesn't. It's just it's totally up to the university. But we'll support you if you choose to go that route, but you don't have to. And then the way you would apply um, is, and I, I actually um, will share this presentation with you. Um, we, esfjobs.com is our career page. I did put our main homepage on here too, because that's just a good place to look at the camps and also look at the programs we offer by location. That's good for information purposes. Uh, but the, to get the job application process started, you would just go to esfjobs.com and that is a separate homepage. And then there's a link at the top right to click search jobs. And then once you click search jobs, that's what lets you search jobs by location. That's where you'll see each of our locations and each of our programs. And if you say, well, I, I really don't wanna search for this job unless it's in Greenwich, Connecticut, then you can search jobs by that location. Um, and, and then you'll see everything that's being offered for that location. Or, or if you live in the Philadelphia area and you love baseball and you wanna look into coaching, you can just click Philly's Baseball Academy and look at positions there. And then of course in Maryland, you would click Gilman School or Academy of Holy Cross. Um, but that's how you would do it and then complete the initial application. Um, for contact info, I, I put my name, which I also shared in the chat. If you are applying for a position in Maryland, Ryan is the recruiter in this area. If you apply for a position outside of Maryland at one of our other locations, we're a small office. Um, one of my coworkers would work with you who recruits for those areas. Um, if you decided to apply and you heard about this through this presentation, you're welcome to let me know, say hi. Um, I applied for the position at Haverford, just wanted to let you know. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll just be sure to send a quick note to the recruiter to make sure they watch for that because um, we definitely want to make sure that, that we follow up with you. Um, but I'll stop there. I know I've talked a long time and I'm sorry I went so long I wanted to stop there for some question and answer. And then I'm happy to, all, I wanted to also cover some just general job search tips first, but um, how, any um, questions that I can answer and I'll, I'll pull up the chat as well. Greg, I had a question. It sounds like they can apply by location or by position or even search by through the type of camp that they're looking to maybe work with? Yes, there, there's a search field that will let you search by position or location. Um, if you go on the webpage, if you go to esfjobs.com, click search jobs, the next thing you'll see is icons for our various locations or the pro sports program. And then you can just click the location. But you can also go to esfjobs.com and just search counselor 
or search coach and, and search a position type. And then when you do that, what you'll see is any counselor or coach position, but it could be various locations. And, and the location of the position is clearly spelled out in the job posting. Um, so you can see it there as well. But yes, you are correct that the job search can be by position type or, or by location. Wonderful. And we have a question about compensation, pay rates, the all important question. Can you talk a little bit about uh, maybe the different pay rates for the positions and such? Yeah, it's a little tricky because it, it does vary. When we do pay rates, we do them by position. And then although camps technically aren't in most states aren't bound by minimum wage laws, we of course try to try to stay at or near as best as we can, depending on where that stands per site. But if I were to just give some rough numbers, um, and this is, this is again tricky by location, um, a counselor position, you know, could range between, you know, and, and, the, and the reason for this large range is because it's gonna vary by state, but it could be anywhere between nine and 12 per hour. There are some states where it could be slightly higher, um, but that's a, that's a rough range for the counselor position. Um, the teaching positions are a bit higher. They could be 13 to 15 per hour, roughly speaking. Um, aquatics positions would fall between the counselor and teaching position because of the extra certification that that requires. And because there's some teaching involved, the counselor Sorry, the aquatics position is a higher pay range than the counselor, but not quite as high as activity specialist. Um, we typically discuss the, the pay ranges within the first interview. Um, you know, we'll, we'll go through the pay ranges based on the position and the interview. We're not trying to hide that. Um, it's just because we have so many positions up there and we're operating in different areas, the ranges will vary, but you will be told the pay range on your first interview for that position in that location. Uh, the, the ranges I gave you were pretty broad. Don't hold me to them uh, because of the, the variations in the states we operate in. And then what will happen is if, if you're offered a position, the offer's in writing. Um, if you accept the offer, we send an employment agreement in writing. Um, so you're going to have things in writing from us that spells it out, what the pay rate is, what that includes, what the hours are. Um, so we're, it would probably take me this whole presentation to walk you through site by site um, and location by location, but we will be upfront about the pay range in, in, in the first interview uh, based on the position. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. We have some really great questions coming in regarding substituting work experience. So if a student hasn't worked directly with children, you mentioned earlier that child care or child services experiences is really important, but are there any other work experiences that can substitute for that? We have one student, for example, mentioning that they are an assistant manager um, in customer relations, customer service role. And another student asking uh, kind of uh, they are a senior, a senior psychology major. So they're gonna be graduating. So they have a wealth of knowledge uh, of the human condition behind them. They might've taken like our child development class, child psych class or two. Um, is there any, are there any experiences you look for outside of say yes. the traditional child experience? Well, uh yeah, the, the examples that you gave, um, if there's coursework that ties to working with children, we're, we're definitely going to consider that. If there is leadership or management experience, we will look at that as well for leadership roles. Um, the customer service experience, we would look at for our, the first position that comes to my mind is our administrative specialist role. Um, in that particular role, customer service would probably outweigh working with children in that role because that person has so much contact with parents. Um, 
as long as we, if, if we can find some connection with working with children, either in the coursework or in the volunteer and working experience, we're going to factor that in as we consider a candidate. Um, and I know this is the Department of Psychology. I know there's psychology coursework that closely relates um, to working with children and families, um, but there could be other majors that have that connection to, we, we would account for that. We're not just looking for one type of work experience, um, but what we, so yes, uh, we just need something uh, to, to start. All right, wonderful. We have another um, question. First question is our internships paid? All of our positions are paid positions. Um, the only determining factor is if it's a if it's a summer job, it's paid. If you're using it as an internship, it's still paid. Yeah, and that's because uh, on our end, for the students in the in the audience, the unit will determine. I, I will say, frankly, for any psych majors in the group, this can definitely count as a psych internship. So, and the fact that the position is paid makes it a paid internship in that regard. Very good. Um, the other question was having to do with the interview process, which I thought was a, a really uh, insightful question. And can you give us any tips or hints about the yes. interview process? What's involved with that? What can they expect from that going forward? I, I, I will, and this is something I wanted to spend a little time on, so I'm really glad the question came up. Um, so I'll tell you about our interview process first. Um, so the first thing is there's an online application. Once you complete that application, um, the, you, you'll receive a response within one to three days. Um, that, that's typically the turnaround time of us, unless it's a long weekend, um, you know, you can expect a response within one to three business days. And the first interview is what we call a screening interview. It might be done by phone or Zoom. And that interview really is just asking you general questions about your background and your schedule, your availability. It's just questions that would tie into things on your resume. Um, in that interview, we're getting, but we're also telling you about us too, um, much briefer than I was today, but giving you an introduction to ESF and asking you about your background. If that interview, goes well for you and for us, there's a follow-up interview that would have what's called, it's, it's more in depth. And it, we ask more detailed questions about your background in terms of working with children, working with other people, general work situations. So in the phone interview, in the screening interview, it just might be, you know, tell me about any experiences you have working with children. Uh, what ages do you prefer working with? Um, tell me about a great, ex, you know, one of the best experiences you had working with a child. It's just some very general questions. In the second interview, we're going to ask questions like, tell me about a time you had to deal with a child who was being uncooperative and you had to handle a behavior situation. We're going to ask for examples. Um, and that's what's called a behavioral interview question. So my interview tips would be a couple things. And a, application tips. One is to make sure your res if you are applying for ESF or any position like us, to make sure your resume connects with the job posting. Make sure if I read your if I read your resume, I know why you've applied to us. I'm like, oh, okay, that's why they're applying to us. Um, it's important that the resume is it has at least some tailoring to the job description, whether it's this or any other field for that matter. Um, if your resume has an objective, there's different points of view on objectives. It doesn't matter to me if it has an objective or not, but if it has an objective, just make sure it ties to this position. Generic objectives are, I, I would discourage generic objectives or objectives that do not apply for the role you're applying for. Um, if you're going to do an objective, make sure it ties to what you're applying for. That, that's not just us, that's anybody. That's my own two cents as a recruiter. Um, and please, these are my opinions as a recruiter. Um, I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I'm just kind of telling you what I see. Um, 
in the screening interview, you want to be prepared to answer questions about your resume. And the other thing I would recommend, and I say this in resume clinics I've done is, get yourself to the point where you can give a one or two minute overview of your resume. I don't know if you've heard the term elevator pitch that's used in sales, but if your resume is one page, and, and it's okay if it's more than one page, but you should still be able to give me a good overview of your experiences in a minute or two. It should be more than 30 seconds. It shouldn't be 10 minutes. It should be about a minute or two. You should be able to give me a good walkthrough of that. So that's something that just takes practice. Practice in, in front of a mirror, practice with a friend. It might feel a little funny, but you'll be glad you did it. And then with the behavioral interview questions, and those are questions that'll begin with, tell me about a time when you did this or you did that. What the question's asking you to do, and, and I'll tell, I tell candidates this, you're describing a situation, you're describing the steps you took to handle the situation, and you're describing how it turned out. So you need to be able to clearly describe what the situation was, to clearly describe what your actions were and how it turned out. Hopefully it turned out well. Um, I wouldn't share any situations that didn't turn out well. A, a happy ending is good. Um, so what I would tell you there is I can promise you that your career center will have sample behavioral interview questions. I would ask for those and I would craft some responses to them. Um, there's no way you can't anticipate every possible behavioral question you'll, you'll get asked. You can certainly anticipate some. Um, you know, in our field, it's going to be, ex we're going to ask you about things related with children, but many fields are going to ask you about experience related to working with other people or showing leadership or dealing with challenges. Um, some, some will directly say, tell me about a time you had to deal with failure. Um, what I would say to that, or, or, or the other one, I'm going to give you just one other tip. If you get a question that says, tell me about a time you had to deal with a failure, or tell me what your weaknesses are. Um, you only have to give one weakness unless they ask for more than one, and make sure it has a happy ending. And by that, I mean, let's use, if, if my weakness is, let's say I struggled with time management. If, if I say, well, yeah, I struggled with time management, but I, I got some advice, I took, a, I took a seminar, I came up with some systems to organize my tasks and my calendar. And now, although I'm still working on this, uh, I have now been able to achieve being able to organize my week in advance and I'm able to manage my tasks more efficiently. So although I'm not perfect in this area, I've gotten a lot better. That's how you answer a weakness question is make sure it has a happy ending. Be truthful, don't make anything up, but talk about how, because the employer is not trying to trip you up. They're just trying to show how you learn, how you develop, and how you recover from challenging situations. Um, so I know that wasn't your question, um, but that was just kind of me sharing some insights and opinions. And please, these are my opinions. Uh, as a recruiter. No, I think you're right on, Greg, with that. Thank you for sharing that. And it's really great for the students to hear that from a recruiter. Um, we do have students, we do have the Feller Center for Advising and Career Planning. I think Greg um, mentioned or put a plug in for looking at um, resumes or looking at cover letters. We have there are resume samples on there. There are cover letter samples on there. There are objectives, how to write an objective sample on there as well. So be sure to use the Feller Center resources, just fellercenter.umd.edu. All right, we're about out of time, but I want to thank Greg. Uh, if we can all give you kind of a virtual applause, Greg, we really do appreciate your time with us today taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to Thank us you. about the, the many opportunities that are available through ESF camps. For the students, we will be doing a blog, a follow-up blog post that will have a little bit more about the job. So we'll do like a job announcement for Greg and ESF on our blog. So you can look for that in the upcoming days. But we hope that 
some or all of you will consider applying for a position. By the way, Greg, what is the deadline to apply? Is there a deadline? I'm glad you asked that, uh, Dr. Young. It's, it's, a rolling, it's a rolling hiring process. Um, so there's not an explicit deadline. So I would say two things about that. One, sooner is to your advantage. But if you are unsure now, but a month from now decide you want to apply, don't let that stop you. Um, because we will, we do find that we are hiring through the start of camp and, and even at times into the summer, it's just a question of what's available where. Um, so sooner, applying sooner is to your advantage. Um, but if you're ironing out plans and you're unsure and you, realize a month from now that you are interested in applying and ready to apply, go ahead. Uh, don't let that stop you. Wonderful. I just thought of another quick, quick question. The training, how long is the training? I know you said the Maryland camps start, I think around June 20th. So is the expectation, I'm assuming then that the training would happen obviously prior to that. And is it like a week or two or? It, no, it's, I'm glad you asked that. Um, our, our, the total time spent in training across all positions is about 12 to 15 hours. There's a, what's called a team training session and then what's called dry run. That's required for all positions. Uh, there are a few other position types that will have additional trainings, uh, but that's like the core requirement and those all take place in June. At most of our locations, the team training and dry run occur on evening or weekend dates prior to camp opening. Camp runs Monday through Friday. We don't have evenings, evenings and weekends while you're working camp um, for the most part, but the trainings are evenings and weekends because some people might still be in school or still teaching. All right. Well, thank you again, Greg. We really appreciate your time and all the information you share with us today is invaluable. The students did put a couple of thank yous to you in the chat box that you might want to check out. Thank so, you. And uh, Greg has his information up here, as you can see it. And you said Ryan is our point person in Maryland. Is that right? For the Maryland uh, sites? That is correct. If you okay. are applying for Gilman School or uh, Academy of Holy Cross, um, you'll deal with myself or Ryan. Um, if you apply for one of our other states, you'll deal with one of our coworkers. And they could reach out to, to Ryan as well if they had sure. questions. Okay, great. Absolutely. All right, yeah, well, I'll, thank I'll, go ahead. I'll, just, I'll let him know too. He knew I was doing this presentation today. So yes, he is happy to take questions as well as myself. And um, we, 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 we appreciate that. All right. Well, thank you again. And thank you all for attending this afternoon. We really appreciate the students you taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.